Hey ya, Tay here. So lately I've come to a realization. I didn't know just how many of you guys were like super beginners to RPG Maker. In fact, I make these parallax mapping videos pretty often and apparently there are a lot of you guys who watch those videos and have no idea what I'm talking about. Why didn't you tell me about this? Dude, you should have warned me. So to make up for that terrible oversight on my part, today we're going to do parallax mapping for beginners. For everyone who's ever been confused in one of my mapping videos, this is for you. So let's start with the big question. What even is parallax mapping? Parallax mapping is a term that RPG Maker users use to describe mapping with images. It's called that because it started by using the engine's built-in parallax background feature. And it's not really talking about parallax scrolling like in a Metroidvania type game. In parallax mapping, you have images behind the player or above the player, and you use those different image layers to give the illusion of depth, typically in a top-down view. Even if you're still new with the engine, you've probably noticed that RPG Maker exists on a grid. You move on the grid, you place events down on the grid, and you map on the grid. When you make a map in the built-in RPG Maker Map Editor, you arrange small pre-drawn images called tiles onto the grid. Tile-based mapping, or tile maps, are a super popular technique used in 2D game development. And even though this is a video about parallax mapping, I just want to iterate very strongly here that there is nothing wrong with tile-based mapping. There are gorgeous games that are made using tile maps. And tile maps have their own benefits over parallax style mapping, like your game's performance. Loading a bunch of repeating tiles is typically a lot faster than loading one huge image. Tile mapping is also typically faster than parallax mapping, especially if the tiles are pre-made, which means you can quickly get out a prototype of your game. So if there's such a good benefit to tile mapping, why do I do parallax mapping? To be honest, I knew I wanted to make an RPG, and my favorite RPGs are PlayStation 1 RPGs. It was the Super Nintendo and earlier that used a lot of tile maps, but PlayStation 1 games started moving away from that. So when I think of classic RPGs and the games that I love and the sort of game that I want to create, I typically think more organic shapes and big set pieces, even in a 2D game. Also, it's just really nice to place lots and lots and lots of little details which is a lot harder with tile-based mapping because you can only have so many tiles, you know? But now that you know what parallax mapping is, let's say that you do decide to use it. First of all, a couple of warnings. Like I mentioned earlier, it takes a bit to load those big parallax map images. So whenever you're creating your game, you're going to have to account for loading times. The way that I do this is on every single map, I have a parallel event that will tint the screen to black and leave it black for a couple of seconds, long enough for the images to load, and then fade the map back in. If I don't do this, my parallax maps will glitch into existence and it'll be very jarring for all involved. Secondly, it takes a plugin or sometimes two or three to do nice parallax mapping. So that means that parallax mapping is really not for people who do not like plugins and do not want to learn plugins and do not want to use plugins. I can hear you now. Okay, hurry up, move on to the tutorial. It's been like forever. I'm moving on. But do not say that I didn't warn you, okay? Okay. So we are going to use Galve's Layer Graphics plugin to learn how to do parallax mapping. I personally believe that this is the best parallax mapping plugin out there. And I'm going to use RPG Maker MV for this demonstration, but the tutorial is essentially the same if you use MZ too. First, download the plugin, the link is in the description below, and then drag the file into your plugins folder, and then load the plugin up in the plugin manager. Second step on getting everything ready is go to your images folder and create a new folder inside of it. We're going to call this folder layers. All of your parallax map images are going to go in this folder. Now let's actually make a map. I find that it's really helpful to figure out scale with your character if you start by creating a map in RPG Maker. You don't have to use this map in the end, obviously we're going for parallax mapping, so we will totally replace this map with images. But you can shove a few things around on this map to get an idea of where things generally are supposed to go. For this demonstration, I'm going to do an incredibly simple and small forest map. I'm going to put the trees in in the actual parallax map, so I won't bother putting any here. I'll just remember, oh, well, this is a forest. There's going to be trees. But I do want to go ahead and lay out generally where I think the path should go. Testing it out, this looks like a pretty good scale. Now, go ahead and open up your image editing program of choice. For me, I like to use GIMP, though I know a lot of my friends like to use Ace Sprite to draw their maps. Now, when you create a new file, the size of your image matters. 
The way that we're going to find the appropriate size for this parallax map image is that we're going to take the amount of tiles that our map has and multiply it times the amount of pixels that are in each tile. For example, if a map is 20 tiles wide and the tiles are 48 by 48 pixels, which is the standard for RPG makers MV and MZ, then 20 times 48, or 960, is going to be the width of our image. We'll do the same thing with the height. Now that we have our map, this is the point where we are going to decide if we want to stick to grid-based movement, or if we want to do something like pixel-based movement and completely throw the grid in the garbage. To be honest, I don't want to do a tutorial on pixel-based movement right now, so we're going to stick to grid-based movement just for this tutorial. If we switch to pixel-based, it would be a whole nother level and a whole bunch of more plugins to install. And this is supposed to be a beginner-friendly video, so let's stick to tile-based movement for now, which means that we need to set up the grid on this image. But hey, that totally goes against the spirit of parallax mapping! Baby steps, friend. Baby steps. And now that we have our grid, we just draw a map. I'm not going to do anything fancy just because this is an example, but the basic workflow is going to be do some ground textures, throw a bunch of trees on there, and then add some decorations like grass and stuff. As we're drawing our map, we need to remember that we're going to try to show things below the player and above the player. And eventually we are going to have to export those different layers into different images. To keep things tidy, we'll have two separate folders of layers here in our image. So we'll have the ground folder, which will be everything below the player, and then we will have the parallax folder, which will be everything above. Certain things, like these trees, we're going to have to be able to walk in front of and also behind. So that means that part of the tree is going to end up on the ground layer, while another part of it is going to end up on the parallax layer. If you're using the normal sprites that are the same size as a tile, basically, it's easy to split this up. But if you're using taller sprites, you're going to have to mess around with it a little to find the sweet spot. Once everything is in place, we can actually start exporting our layers. You'll notice that I added a third one for a little bit of ambient shadow and lighting and stuff. So let's hide our parallax and our shadow layers and just show the ground layers. We'll export this image into our layers folder. Pro tip, I've found that the best naming convention for your map layers is the number associated with the map followed by the type of layer that it is. For example, ground or parallax or shadow. So since this is for map 11, I'm going to name this ground image 011 ground. The parallax image will be 011 parallax. And then the shadow image will be 011 shadow. That way, all of the images for this map stay next to each other within the folder whenever you sort by name, but it's clear exactly what layer type they are. Now, as far as actually using the plugin to load these image layers onto our map, when you go to map properties, every map has a note box. You could put plugin related lines in that note box and the plugin will automatically call and run it for that map. In that note box is where we're going to put our layer information. You actually can do this in an event as a plugin command too, but let's focus on the note boxes for now because I think that that's the most typical use for a parallax map. There are two types of layers in Gauss layer graphics. There's a static layer and then there's a normal moving layer. The moving layers can be things like fogs or water, but for the map itself, we're going to use static layers. Looking in the plugin's help file, we can see that the command for calling a layer looks like this. First, layer underscore s. This is the keyword for the plugin. This says there's going to be a static layer here, and the underscore s is what makes it static. A moving layer would just have the word layer as the keyword. Next is ID. This is the ID of the layer. An ID works the same way as like picture IDs when you do a show picture event command. And each layer on a map needs its own unique ID. I like to just start at one and then count up. Next is graphic, and this is just your image name. So since we're showing the ground layer first, let's go ahead and type in 011 ground. We don't need the file extension or anything. Next is X, it's the X position of your image. For example, if you for some reason have a smaller image than your map size, you can change the position of that image here. But I do not recommend that. I recommend doing what we did and just counting to make sure that our image size matches our map. Since we don't need any X shift on this map, we'll just leave that at zero. Y is the exact same as X and we'll just leave it at zero as well. Next is opacity. Opacity goes from zero at completely transparent to 255 at fully opaque. It's sometimes good to lower the opacity of light, shadow, or fog layers. But for the ground and parallax layers, you'll want the opacity to stay at that 255. 
so we'll go ahead and change this to 255. Next is our Z layer, and for parallax mapping, this one is actually really important. So if X is the horizontal shift of your image, and then Y is the vertical shift of your image, Z is the shift of your image forward or backward. And I don't mean it's like zooming in and out. I mean your Z layer decides which of your images are on top of each other, or on top of or behind your player and events. A Z layer of zero is a ground layer, whereas a Z layer of five would be like a parallax layer above everything. You could even go into the negatives here and have layers below the ground. But since this is a normal ground layer, let's just go ahead and leave the Z at zero. And the last one is blend mode. So zero is a normal image, one is add, two is multiply, and three is screen. And that's our ground layer setup. For our parallax layer, it's going to be almost exactly the same. The only thing that I'm going to change is that the ID is going to be two, and the parallax layer is going to be a Z level of five. Finally, our shadow layer, it's going to have the ID of three, it's going to have a Z level of six, but instead of doing the 255 opacity, I'm actually going to drop that down to about 180. And to be honest, this example is what 99% of your maps will look like, at least if you're mapping anything like I am. You might have a moving fog layer, or you might have a water layer that's moving beneath everything, but those are honestly more advanced, and this is a parallax mapping for beginners tutorial. And there it is, your basic parallax mapping. The last thing that we need to do is set up passability. Since we decided to stick with a tile-based movement for now, it's going to be very easy. All I want is for the player to not be able to walk through the trees. So I'm going to open up my tile sets, and I'm going to go to the currently used tile set on our map, and I'm going to make sure that this stump is set to not walkable. Now, let me put our full parallax image, just as a preview, in the parallax folder. I'm going to make my entire map transparent so I can see it back there, and then I'm going to take that stump and I am going to put the stump at the base of every single tree trunk. Once all my stumps are in place, I'm going to take a very walkable, just like green grass tile, and I'm going to put that everywhere else. We're not going to see the stumps and the grass in our finished map. They'll be covered up by our parallax images. And then all we have to do is play test it. Yay, it's a forest. So there it was, parallax mapping for beginners. Was this tutorial helpful? Do you think that you'll do parallax mapping in your own game or stick with tile maps? By the way, you can follow some of the tutorials in my other videos to really take this map to the next level. And there's really a lot you can do with a map to make it like extra, extra pretty beyond parallaxing. But let me know what you think of this tutorial. And by the way, I am sorry that this video is late. I normally try to upload every week, but I kept trying to record audio and it just kept not working because my neighbors are really, really loud all the time. Anyway, if you liked this video, leave a comment or subscribe or uh, like it, do the YouTube stuff, or consider buying me a cup of coffee, link in the description below, or join my Discord. Actually, this video started because of a question on Discord, and I wrote up a whole tutorial and it was really awesome, and then I was like, wait a minute, this is like the third time I've written this tutorial, why don't I just make a video? So anyway, you can get a personalized tutorial if you join my Discord. No refunds. They're, they're free. That's why there's no refund. Anyway, bye!